Kyle Larson did his first laps here last year. He subsequently did a test at Phoenix to get just more laps in the car, more laps with the team, used to the processes and procedures. And uh, he's now getting up to speed in the veteran class, which is which is pretty fun to think about. This is so cool to watch because so many of us have been asking, hoping, begging Kyle Larson to do this race. He's flirted with it over the last decade or so, came close at one point, and now he's here. He is one of the most talented drivers in any type of car we have seen. He's won the Rolex 24 before in the top class. And now he's getting a chance to cross one off, and not just cross it off, have a chance to win. Kyle Larson is at the Indianapolis 500. So is that how you prep? You wake up from a nap and still look half? I, I know he's pretty calm and cool. They must do stuff different in NASCAR. <laughs> I, I promise you, when you're sitting in line waiting for your first qualifying attempt, napping is the furthest thing from your mind. You want to keep the heart rate low, but it's uh, easier said than done. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm glad he's getting the opportunity to practice that. We'll see how it actually works in, in principle when he's out, uh, out on track on qualifying weekend. It's going pretty well for Kyle this year in the day job, too. He's finished second in the last two cup races. He's already got a win. He's third in playoff points. He leads in overall points. They changed things up, so he's back in the full-time entry because, remember, Christian is not doing right. right. This is the only oval that Christian is doing. Right. He actually lost a race when the schedule changed. He was to do the Nashville Street race, but now that's an oval, so Ed Carpenter is doing that race at the end of the season, so Ed picked up an extra race. So that makes sense then to make sure Ed's got the, the car that's going to be scoring points in the leader circle, you know, the, for the car championship, the car uh, the car points for leader circle entries. And that was a real uh, difficult situation for Ed because that meant on the other oval races, you know, for example, Iowa, Worldwide Technology Raceway, uh, walking. He, he was starting from the back. He was the first out in qualifying on a green track every single time because his car, his entry, was part-time and was last an entry point. What's still a little bit TBD as to what the penalty would be and how exactly is it enforced? Is it all four? If you are touching the line, that that is still to be determined as we move forward, but I'm for this. I, I get that you are allowed to be proactive, but when you clearly have all four below the line and are headed to the pit lane, um, that attenuator frightens me. It's just dangerous. It's just dangerous and unnecessary. As you see Kyle Larson pulling off a pass here on Renus VK to turn one, very comfortable getting up to speed, and uh, he's actually set the fastest, wow. second fastest lap time. Wow! Second fastest speed, 226.3, so no, no time at all for Kyle Larson to get comfortable in that number 17 machine. Now Renus looking to try to fight back. I know he had a draft there, but whatever. Whatever. And, this is brand new to this guy. Look, to, to pull off a lap like that, you still have to have the confidence mid-corner running in dirty air to be able to close up and have that kind of speed. So, yes, fine. That is a draft lap, but your car and your confidence have to be working at maximum levels for you to be able to keep your foot buried in the throttle that close behind another car. He is immediately comfortable in these conditions. I'll admit I'm thinking of our late friend and colleague, Robin Miller, who was one of many that championed, and he... He was one of the first to tell us about Kyle Larson when he was coming up through the short track ranks that this kid is going to be great in whatever he drives. And I remember the last May that Robin was here uh, for the Brickyard weekend talking to Kyle. And I watched that conversation of you know imploring him to find a way to get to the Indy 500 because you're going to be good at it. Robin is one of many that has been asking for this for a long time. And the day is here. It's not his first time in an Indy car. He was here last October, which is why he's out there with the veterans right now, 
even though he's a rookie. And he also had a chance to get a little bit of a taste in early February on a short oval at Phoenix, the one-mile oval in a test, which was a very different circumstance. But Kyle said that allowed him just the chance to feel out the car when something goes wrong at a little bit slower speeds. What does a Phoenix test do for someone like Kyle Larson for this when you're in a very different type of car? You know, for me, it's, it's you know, going to a track he obviously has a lot of experience at, as he does here at Indianapolis, but uh, it gives him more time with the team, more time with the engineers, more time to speak the language, learn the vernacular, really kind of get up to speed. From a pure driving standpoint, there's not as much of a correlation to say going to even a Texas uh, just because the speeds, the wing package is different. Uh, so the car does feel quite different. But again, for a driver that had only done one day in an open wheel car, it's uh, it's seat, it's seat time, right? A any laps really help and are really valuable. We've got one of the big stories through the month of May and in April with Dylan. And that is, of course, Kyle Larson, who is uh, done with his first couple of hours of practice here, second on the board at the end of that session. So what is it that you want to learn or, or feel or understand maybe by the end of today that, uh, you know, that you really can only learn kind of by being out there with other cars and that sort of thing? Yeah, that's it. I think just kind of getting in some traffic and, like, feeling the you know, the, the dirt, the dirty air and the turbulent air and all that. Like, the first time I got in traffic, I think my tires still had good grip, so I was surprised. Like, it didn't feel that different in traffic. Um, and there that last time I was kind of, I was already building, you know, tight or understeer and, um, and then New Garden got by me and I really was super tight behind him. So just uh, trying to learn all that and process all that and, and just knowing what I can do in the car to try to help cope with that and, and timing the runs behind me. Um, just trying to figure out any bit of like race craft today, which I know is tough, but um, just, just trying to get you know, an idea of things and just get notes in my head and um, all of that, you know, just getting comfortable like on pit lane and pulling in the pit stall and, and out of it, I feel like I've gotten more comfortable with the clutch and, and all that. So, um, no, it's been so far so good and uh, just good to get laps. Hearing you bounce back and forth between the terminology of like tight and understeer, I know it's an adjustment, but having Brian Campy on the stand and in your ear who has been on both sides, IndyCar and NASCAR, how much has that helped you, or do you feel like it's helped you so far? Yeah, I think having Campy here with his experience here and, and then his, also his experience at Hendrick Motorsports and being around the way I communicate in competition meetings and, and stuff like that is, I think, really, uh, really important to have him here to kind of help just that transition period of communication um, and all that. And just also, you know, what to look out for throughout the, the practice sessions in the month of May and all that. So. Um, I'm very happy that Hendrick Motorsports is kind of loaning him uh, to me for for this experience because I really think it's going to be beneficial and um, and everybody here has been really easy to work with and, and talking and, and Tony can on as well. So I've got a great group that's helping and all that. There's just a lot left to learn still. So um, enjoying it so far and um, yeah, just keep learning. You, of course, are, are renowned for your ability to just jump into cars and make them go fast and it seems pretty natural when you do that where does this feel on the natural ability scale jumping in a car and, and going what 226 plus miles an hour you know right out of the gate well right out of the gate I'm like man I don't know I made a mistake here I'm going way too fast like it's it's weird for like like my brain is not ready to go that fast I guess in the morning and um so I was like, man, this is crazy. And like you see cars way out in the distance, they're like peeling off in the corner so fast. And it's just wild. But then like your brain kind of adapts and all that and things start slowing down. And um, honestly, I think like as I got closer to people, like you know, the, the judgment of speed, like off in the distance when they're far away, they look really fast. But then as you get closer, like you're just, you're going the same speed as them. So it didn't feel like way f way fast once I got around people, but um, the overall feel of the car and all that is obviously different, but I, I do feel like our next-gen NASCAR stuff is transitioned a lot closer to what a IndyCar feels like, so it's not too different, honestly, but um, 
you know, all the tools you have in the car, pit stop stuff, just the communication and the, the data is different to look at. You know, like SMT is so nice in NASCAR to look at. Like I could, I, if I wish I had SMT right now, because I could just look at that and learn and, and flip through, you know, laps and, and see like a, you know, a video basically. Or this feels like more old school kind of a way, of a way to learn um, compared to what we're used to. So it's just different, but it's it's a good experience because I think it just opens my eyes to different ways of looking at things and um, how to approach things. So uh, it's been it's been good, like I said so far, but still a, a lot to learn and um, haven't even scratched the surface probably yet. So, uh, but it's been fun. So just look forward to getting back out there. Hopefully later. Hopefully the weather continues to hold off and we get more laps. Thank you, Kyle. Hi folks, Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.